Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we will solve some data sufficiency problems that you will find on page number 213. Page to page, turn to page 213 from data sufficiency problems. Make sure the book is in front of you. After having watched the video, if you find it helpful and if you decide that you would like to work with me, you would like to hire me as a tutor to get you ready for the exam, you can reach me at Kashmani Prep at iCloud.com. Alright, let's begin. The very first problem, number 262 on the page, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Apparently, we're making toys. We're making toys, and we are told that we're going to make toys in two sizes, small and large. We are also told that we are, we are going to make toys only in two colors, red and green. We are further told that we're going to make equal number of red and green for each size. The question simply is, what fraction of total number of toys, total number of, what fraction of total number of green toys are large? What number of total number of what, what, what fraction of the total number of green toys, not the total number altogether, but totally the total number of green toys are large. Let's set it up properly so that we know what we're doing. I'm going to raise the thing, we need the room. Let's set it up properly. So here we go. Here we have small and large <coughs> and red and green. First thing first, since we are told that we are making equal number of red and green, equal number of red and green for each size, you have to keep that in mind, equal number of red and green. So let's make x number of red for the small and equal number of green for small. And similarly, we're going to make y number, y number of toys for red, large toys. For large toys, we're going to make y, to, y of the large, large one in red and similarly, y of the large one in, in green. And therefore the total we have here, we have 2x here, 2x total toys in small size and 2y total toys in large size and all together we have 2x plus 2y, here we have x plus y, x plus y is the number of toys that we make that are green colors, x, x, of, them are, x of them are small size, y of them are large size and similarly we have x plus y number of toys that are red colors. Now we can answer our question. Now we'll know what we're looking for. So, so the fraction that we're looking for is a fraction of green toys that are large. So we're looking for large toys, large green toys, large green toys out of total, total green toys. And if you set it up properly from the very beginning, of course the difference, so the big difference obviously is that when you're doing it yourself, it goes much faster. Here I'm, I'm, I'm explaining everything. So now how many large green toys do we have? Large green toys. We have Y of them. And how many total green toys we have? We have total of X plus Y. This is what we're looking for. This is the quantity we are trying to find. And it's important that we understand that. Now we are ready to look at, now we are ready to look at what are we being told? What is it that we are told in the first statement? In the first statement, it tells us that 400, 400 of the small toys, small toys are green. 400 of the small toys are green. 400 of the small toys are green. Green and small toys. So what they're telling us is that this quantity is 400. If that quantity is 400, this quantity is 400, that quantity is 800. But it's not going to get us anywhere. It's not going to get us anywhere because this is what they're looking for. They're looking for y over x plus y. We know now that x is 400. But how can we possibly figure out this fraction without knowing anything at all about what y is? This first statement is not enough. First statement is not enough. Where can we put it here? Let's put it right here. A, D, B, C, E. Since we just established that the first statement is not enough, we know answer cannot be A or D. Okay. I want to erase this arrow. I don't want you to think that there is any significance. There we go. Answer, answer is not A or D. It will have to be either B, C or E. 
Let's look at second statement. Let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us that two third of total toys, two thirds of total toys are small. Two thirds of total toys are small. Let's see what we can do with it, okay? So here's the small toys, and here's the total toys. And total toys means exactly what it says total toys, as in this quantity. This is the total toys. Now, at this point, since we are working with the second statement, it will be wise to erase this part. It, is no, it no longer exists. We don't have this information. That was from the first, that was from the first statement. Let's, let's see what we can do. Total number of toys are 2x plus 2y, 2x plus 2y, and small toys, total small toys, small toys are 2x. Before we do anything at all, let's simplify this thing. This is 2 times x, this is 2 times x, and 2 times y. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. So this falls down to x over x plus y. Voila. And that quantity we are told is 2 third. 2 third of the total toys, we are told that this is 2 third. If x, if x over x plus y is 2 third, is 2 third, if x plus xy is two third, which is what we just got out of there, that must imply that must that must mean that y over x plus y must be one third. And what do you suppose that is? That is what we're looking for, which means second statement is enough. We have answered the question that was being asked, and this information that is given to us in statement two by itself is quite enough. The answer to this problem is D. Let's look at the next one. Three hundred and sixty-three. Three hundred and sixty-three. Maybe I was going too slowly. Maybe I was getting too much of a leisurely pace. Three sixty-three says, "Is quadrilateral P Q R S." a parallelogram that is all that is being asked and that is all that is there they do not give us any picture of parallelogram it's just a parallelogram pqrs question is or other it's just a quadrilateral all we're told is that we have a four-sided picture pqrs is it a parallelogram let's see what they tell us let's see what it tells us statement one tells us Statement one tells us that the adjacent side, adjacent sides, PQ and QR have the same length. We are told that the adjacent sides PQ and QR have the same length. So let's see what we can do here. Let's erase all of this thing. We don't need it. Is that enough? Do you think? Is that enough? To, you think to answer the question? Is it a parallelogram? Based on the fact that the two adjacent sides are equal, let's find out. Let's draw. Let's let's, let's draw a simple parallelogram. Here is P, Q, R, or rather P, Q, R, and we are told that this side equals this side. You see, adjacent side P, Q equals Q, R. Now, does it need to be parallelogram? No, it does not need to be. Can it be parallelogram? Answer is why not? It could be parallelogram. It could be something like this. In which case, it is a parallelogram. The answer is yes. But does it need to be like this? No, we don't know that. All we know is that these two sides are equal. P, Q, and R. These two sides are equal and that is all we are told. But does it need to be parallelogram? Does it have to be parallelogram? The answer is no. For all we know, it could be something like this. In which case it is not a parallelogram. Or, so this, this part was yes part and this part was no part. Is it a parallelogram? Yes it is. No it is. It's conflicting. We can't really tell. There is one more possibility about which falls under the category of yes. It could, for all we know, for all we know, it could just be a square. P, Q, R, S. It's a square, and a square is a parallelogram. Of course it's a parallelogram. Because the only requirement of a parallelogram is that the two opposite sides are to be parallel. That's only, that is, all squares are parallelogram. 
all parallelograms are not squares, but all squares are parallelograms, just like all squares are rectangles. But not all rectangles are square, you understand that? So, the answer is no, we cannot tell based on the first statement. Based on the first statement, we cannot tell. Let's put it right here. A, D, B, C, E. Answer cannot be A or D. Let's look at second statement. Let's look at second statement. Second statement goes on to tell us that the adjacent side Second statement tells, goes on to tell us that just inside RS and SP are equal. Exact same thing, but they have the same length. Now let's see what we can do with it. I hope you understand, I hope you are able to realize right away that the second, I hope that you are able to understand and realize right away that the information that is given to us in the second statement is actually the exact same information. There is no difference. There is absolute, it's the exact same information just with different vertices. Vertices are different, but it's the exact same thing. Why is there the same information? Because we just change the name of the you just change the name of the vertices. Instead of calling them PQR, let's just call them. Nothing is going to change. There you go. R to S, R to S is same as S to P. R S P, and this must be Q. P Q R S. There you go. Same thing here. P Q R S. And again, S to R is the same length as S to P. Same thing here. P, Q, R, S is the exact same thing as I told you. These two sides are equal. But that does not necessarily mean that's a parallelogram. Let's put the two statements together. So the second statement does not do the job either. The answer is not B. Let's put the two statements together. When we put them together, remember we have to satisfy now two conditions. Rs, Rs has to be equal to, so now we're doing them together. Now we're doing them together part, and in together we have to satisfy two conditions. This is the second condition, and the first condition was that PQ has to equal QR. Let's see what we can do now. Does it, merit, does it make it a parallelogram? Let's find out. It says PQ has to equal the QR, here's your PQ. Here is your PQ, which has to equal to QR, and here is your RS, RS, RS has to equal SP. This is one possibility. This is one possibility, as you can see, that, that works. Another possibility is that, another possibility that we possibly have is actually a parallelogram. Here, in this case, the answer would be no. Is it a parallelogram? The answer is no. But we could show a situation where the answer happens to be yes, where it turns out that it is a, it is actually a parallelogram. It is in fact a parallelogram where P Q R S. Now pay attention here. What watch what happens? P Q has to equal P Q has to equal Q R. That's the first first condition. But because we have drawn it as a parallelogram, and we also know R S R S has to equal P S. But because it's a parallelogram, then this side P Q must equal RS because we are drawing it in a parallelogram. So all four sides are equal. And in that case it would be a parallelogram. But we have satisfied both the conditions. We have satisfied both the conditions and it would take that form. Or it could just take a square as we talked about it before. It could be a square where all four, four sides are equal. So just because we know that the two adjacent sides are equal to each other these two adjacent sides are equal to each other, and these two adjacent sides are equal to each other. That in itself does not necessarily mean that it needs to be a parallelogram. It may be, it may not be. Something like this. I, I believe it is called rhombus. It looks like a kite, as you can see. It looks like a kite. And I think it's called a rhombus, but don't quote me on that. That was it. So the answer to this question is E. After all that work, the answer is E. Is it a parallelogram? To which the answer would be not necessarily so. Is it a parallelogram? It could be, it could not be, or which is verbose, if you want to put it succinctly, not necessarily so. Number 364. Or if you just want to answer in just two words to this question, is it a parallelogram? Answer is not necessarily. That's all, not necessarily. 364. 364 says, 
Oh, I'm going to geometry question. Do triangle P, do triangle OPQ and triangle QRS have same areas. And here they actually give us the picture, so we're going to reproduce the picture here. The picture looks something like this. It, it comes all the way up to here. They, they, they have the same altitude. They don't give us the direct line, but we know they have the same altitude because they give us the coordinates. The coordinates of point P are A3 and coordinates of R are B3. As you can see, the y coordinate is the same, so we know they come to the same altitude. This is 0, 0 obviously, point O. This is Q, which is we are told is C0. And this is, I don't know what, what they call this thing, P, Q, R, let's call it S. And this is D0. D0, oh yes, they do call it uh, S obviously. Well, let's find out. We can see from the picture, obviously, as, we, as I already told you, we can see clearly from the picture, this dotted line is something that I put in, but even without the dotted line, we can see that they, they have the same altitude because the y-coordinate is the same. Y-coordinate, y-coordinate is the same. In both of case, they have the same altitude. And to figure out the area of a triangle, we need to know the base and we need to know the height. You with me? We need to know what the base is, we need to know what the height is. The height is the same for both triangles. So only thing that matters here is, do, do they have the equal bases? Do they have equal bases. And if we can answer that question, then they must have the right, if, if the bases are equal, then they must have the equal equal areas. And the base for this one, the first one is from O to Q. If, if O to Q is equal to Q to S, then yes. Yes, they do have the same, same areas because they have the same altitude, they will have the equal bases and they will have the equal areas. O to Q, O to Q right here, O to Q is distance C. So this C has to equal, and Q to S, pay attention here, Q to S, Q to S, this is this, this x coordinate is D, so it is D minus C. The distance from here is this distance minus that distance. Distance from here to here is the entire distance minus this distance. That's all. So C has to equal D minus C, which in, which, in, uh, which in turn means that if we can prove, if we can prove that this distance from 0 to D is twice the distance of this guy from O to Q, then we are done. I'm explaining way too much. Let's see what they tell us. That was too much explanation. First statement. The first statement tells us that B equals 2A which is great, B equals 2A, but it does absolutely no good for us here because we are interested in knowing how C compares to D. We are not interested in A and B. A and B have to deal with the altitude. We don't need any information for it. We can clearly see they have the equal altitude. And even, even if we did have something useful out of it here, it doesn't apply here. We, we want to see how C equals to D. The first statement does not do anything. A, B, C, D, E. The first statement it does not do anything. Let's look at the second statement. The first statement is not sufficient. D says, oh, what do you suppose statement, statement D says? Can you guess? You have the book in front of you. Take a look at it. In statement number 2, number 364. Oh, aren't they nice? This is statement 2. There you go. They tell us exactly what we're looking for. So obviously here, we have enough information. The answer is B. The answer is B. I don't know what the hell is going on here. A, D. B, C, E. I have no idea what is going on here. A, D, B, C, E. The answer is B. 365. Sometimes, sometimes they are very nice. They actually tell you exactly in one of the statements the precise information that we are looking for, which makes it easier. Number 365. 
has to do with sequence. It says, after the first two terms in a sequence, each term in the sequence is gotten each term in the sequence is gotten by adding all the preceding terms. That's what we have to follow. The question simply is, is is the is the in my notes here I've written down first term but it can't possibly be that that is stupid. I wrote down something different obviously I wrote down is the is the fifth term it should have said fifth term is the fifth term twelve. Let's see what we can do. Statement one tells us the statement one tells us that the sum of the first three terms equals six. Let's see what we can do with that, shall we? So here's our sequence here, a1, a2, a3, and they tell us that the sum of these first three sequences, stay with me in the story, okay? They tell us that the sum of the first three terms is six. And how do you suppose we're going to get fourth term? Well, how do we, what's the formula? The formula simply says that after the first two terms, once we know the first, in this sequence, if you know the first two terms, you know the entire, you can build the entire sequence because after the first two terms, to get each additional term, you simply add up all the previous terms. So what do you suppose A4 is going to be? Well, A4 is going to be the sum of the first three, which is right here. They tell us the sum of the first three terms is six. That is your A4. And how do you suppose we get A5, the fifth term? Fifth term, we simply add up all the previous four terms. But we know A4 is 6, and we know the sum of the first three is 6. Voila! I shouldn't have written it like this. And therefore, A5, the fifth term, must be 12. Which means first statement does the job beautifully in answering the question, is the fifth term 12? The answer is yes. A, D, B, C, E. Since we know that the first statement by itself was enough, we know answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or D, depending on how useful the second sec, second second statement is. Let's look at second statement on the top. Second statement says. Second statement tells tells that A four, the fourth term is six, but that's very useful. Fourth term is six, what does it mean? A fourth term is six, which means A1, A2, A3, A4, and we are interested in A5. This is what we're trying to find out. If the fourth term is six, that implies that implies that these three terms, the sum of these three terms, must also have been six. Because that's how we get the fourth term. Fourth term is simply the sum of the previous three terms. So if they tell us that the fourth term is six, then the sum of the first three terms must six also. How do you suppose we get A5? The fifth term. Fifth term is simply the sum of all the four last previous terms, which is simply 12. The second statement does the job nicely as well. The answer here is D. The answer is D. Let's look at 366, the very last one on that, on that page. It says J has worked twice as many hours, twice as many years rather, as G. J and G are working, they are working in a firm and we are told that this Mr. J has been there twice as long as Mr. G has. We are further told that G 
has worked four more years than S. There you go. What I mean by there you go is that there you go. Now we know that we have to deal with three unknowns. Since we have to deal with three unknowns, we better have three independent equations. If we do not have three independent equations, we cannot answer what each of these variables is, whichever one they are asking. We must have three independent equations. What they are asking here is how much how 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 much is this guy g? What's the value for g? Let's see what they tell us. Okay, so far, so far, how many equations do we have? Well, let's find out. Before we do the work here, before I write first statement, let's find out how many how many equations we have. Well, we have two sentences, and therefore we have two equations because the sentence is an equation. Let's work on this guy first. Let's work on this guy first. J has worked twice as long as G, so we're going to use letter J to represent the number of years J has worked. And J has worked how many years has J worked? I don't know how many years J has worked, but however many years G has worked, J has worked twice as many. So that is our first equation. Well, how many years has G worked? I don't know how many, G worked, how many years G has worked, but I know he's been here four more years than S has. So however many years S has worked, G has worked four more years. Because I remember hiring this guy four years later than I hired this guy. I hired this guy four years later I hired this guy. So G has worked four more years. Oh, that's the other way around. G has worked four more years. I hired G and then four years later I, I hired yes, S. There you go. Let's put these two equations on the top so we can use the space. Let's erase all of this thing. We're looking for G. I shouldn't have written them down like this. So J equals 2G. That came... And that is given to us. This all of this is given to us. And G equals S plus 4. Now we can look at statement 1. Now we can look at statement 1 and see if it gives us something useful. It says J has worked nine more years then S. That's for nine more years. Then S. There you go. How many years? How many years has J worked? I don't know. But I know he's been here nine years longer than S has. So how are many years S worked? J has worked nine more years. There you go. That's it, we're done. Now if if this if this is if this had been real exam, if we were taking the real exam right now, if 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 we were taking real exam right now, it will be damn silly to go on with it any further. We want to find out what G is. The question is what is G? But that is not the question here. The question here is not what G is. The question is the question here is these are called data sufficiency. Nobody's asking what how much G is. The question here is do we have enough information to figure out the G? The answer is yes. How do we know that? Because we have three independent equations and three unknown. First statement by itself is quite enough. A, D, B, C, E. The first statement by itself is quite enough. We don't have to do anything else. Let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us that green has worked. Green, Mr. Green has worked. Five fewer years than Jones. There you go. Green has worked. How many years has Green worked? How many work years has Green worked? I don't know, but he's been here. He be hired in five years better than we hired this guy. So how many years Jones has worked? Green has worked five fewer years. There you go. Now we're not looking at first statement, we're just looking at second statement by itself. And can we figure out what G is? The answer again is yes, because we have three independent equations. One, two, three. And therefore we can answer G. The answer to this question is D. And that is all, that is all you should do in the real exam. Nothing more than that. Anything more than that is a waste of time. But right now, we're not taking real exam. So just, just for practice, just for practice, let's do it out, just to, just to get some practice in algebra, let's do it out. Which one should we work? Let's work on the first statement first, seems logical, and then we'll work on the second statement. 
Let's see how long it takes and, and how complicated it is. We don't need any of that. These are the three equations we are working with. Let's see, we are looking for G. Right here is G. How much is J? J is S plus, very good. Let's combine these two, which means S plus 9. S plus 9 equals 2G. And we are looking for G. And S we know, S we know is G minus 4. There you go. G minus 4 is S equals 2G. There you go. It's a very simple equation. Obviously we can solve for G. Bring the G to the other side. And 9 minus 4. There you go. It's, it's, it's actually not that complicated at all. Apparently, G has been there for 5 years. Apparently, G has been there for 5 years. Now let's work with second statement. Second statement told us. Second statement told us told us that Green has worked Green has worked five fewer years than Jones. Green has worked five fewer years than Jones. There you go. This is the number of years Jones has worked. If you take away five from years, five five from it, that's how many years Mr. Green has been with us. Let's see what we can do here. Let's do it on this side. Let's, let's give this a press. So this was the work based on the first statement that we arrived at. Now let's look at second statement. Now we'll do the work based on this equation. Again, we're looking for G, remember that. Nothing else, we're interested in G. So we know G is right here. G is right here. G is S plus 4 and S plus 4. I don't see any S anywhere. G is yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Let's start with this one here. Right here is G. G is J minus J minus 5. Let's put the J from here. Oh, there you go. J equals 2G. So G equals 2G. Oh, this is very simple. Oh, this is too silly. Just combine these two equations. That's all. We don't even need that guy. So if you combine these two, J equals 2G and G is G minus 5. G is J minus 5. So it's just 2G minus 5. As you can see, you subtract G from both sides. It's very simple. G is equals 5. And as you can see, they both give us the same information. They must, statement 1 and statement 2 must always give us the same information. If they give us something different, that, that is the indication that something has gone wrong in your work. If one statement tells you that Mr. Green has been with us for 7 years, and another statement tells us that Mr. Green has been here for 5 years, something has gone wrong. They always agree. That was the end of the page. That was the end of the page. We're going to stop right here. It seems it seems logical. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll pick up from where we left off yesterday in the multiple choice questions. Alright? As I said before in the beginning of the video, if you wish to get hold of me, send me an email at Kashwani Prep, that's P E R P R E P, Kashwani Prep at iCloud.com. Alright? Bye now.